Today we are leaving the Bay of Conception. Let me tell you guys, it is getting hot here. So I have to get serious about getting as far south as I want so I can start heading north again. But before we leave, I have a beautiful opportunity to get out and try some sailing. I can't wait. This is the Sea Witch. She is a 1986 Morgan 43, owned by Captain Pym and crewed by a couple of sailboat hitchhikers, all of which happy to share in a beautiful day on the water. I've been interested in sailing for years, but I've had very few opportunities to actually get out and try. Lucky for me, the crew was eager to show me the ropes and let me participate and learn hands-on. We motored into the channel, found some wind and hoisted the sail. And let me tell you, it's a pretty remarkable feeling being under the power of nothing more than the wind, especially when you look down and see a speed of seven knots. We sailed for about an hour down the bay, but with the inconsistent winds in the Sea of Cortez, we had to return on the motor. The company was great, the experience was a blast, and it was just the perfect way to spend my last day in the Bay of Conception. supposed to be good fishing spots because I still haven't got to stock up the freezer and that was a big reason for coming here to the peninsula. So today we're en route to Loretto. I'd love to get in a bunch more spear fishing and hopefully some yellowtail. In 200 meters, turn right. Got a hot lead on a beach that you can camp at here for free, but town is a little bit tight. <laughs> There's a pretty good chance that the folks that gave me the directions are gonna see this video. I'm not gonna say they're bad directions, but I don't know how I feel about this road. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh man. If this goes to a beach where I can camp, I will be pleasantly surprised. These are the kind of stories I love once everything is sorted. But at this point, I feel like I'm going to have to back out like miles of whatever this half developed Malacan is here. I can hardly believe it. That rig right there. Those are my friends that gave me the directions. You guys, if you see this video, great directions. <laughs> oh man. It appears we have become stuck in the sand.
If there's anything I've learned with motorhome living, when you're faced with a big problem like this, there's three critical steps. One, procrastinate it for a later date. Two, prep the boat, go fishing. I just want to make sure to mention, when you're out here in this much heat, it's very important to stay hydrated. The waters all around Loretto are protected, so I had to motor way out into the ocean here. Just about to rig up, but I'm going with the same setup as last time weighted minnow on the big rod, and I'm gonna go with an orange crocodile on the ditch rod. Tiny change in strategy today. This is the first place I've been fishing where there's other boats on the water, and there's a whole bunch of boats in this area. Almost certainly, I am the only one that has no idea what they're doing, but if I fish where they're fishing, I'm one step closer. <laughs> There's a boat just behind me here that just landed a fish and everyone is stationary, not trolling. I googled how to jig for yellowtail. Haven't tried it yet, but we're gonna give it a whirl. I don't think this technique is gonna work, but as soon as I stopped and started jigging here, Two other boats came over and started fishing really close by. They totally think I know what I'm doing. On the charts, this whole area says unpassable. I have figured out why. Look at this. It's right up on the surface. We're way out here too. Fishing being one of my favorite pastimes, I sure am bad at it. Five hours out here, every lure I've tried, not a single bite. But look at the weather. I hate to say it, I'm gonna have to call it the last boat out here. Not a single bite. <laughs> Might have to hire a professional. I looked into the cost of booking a charter and at the outrageous price of $70 American, it was kind of a no brainer to at least get me out there and learn how to properly catch these fish. It's just after four in the morning, but today's the day getting my first yellow tail. Memories filling up my mind and I can't seem to push him back. These times ingrained my mind and I just can't let it go. How did I lose the way through the things that really matter? These complications in my mind but I know I gotta keep pushing. So everybody's making fun of me because I spent weeks not catching fish. First cast, we're into a fish. Here we go, we're into a big one. This is Fishtown. 
gonna believe it. Picked up a hitchhiker here. <laughs> Look at this guy. That fishing charter ended up being absolutely perfect. There was four of us on board and we landed four yellowtails. So we each got to go home with a nice amount of meat. And I get a lot of questions about what I do for food preservation and storage. And Food preservation is very important to me because I like to catch and harvest as much of my own food as possible. So I wanna run you guys through the system that I put in the motorhome here. If you're looking at alternative living, you have a few different options. Propane being the best, but most expensive. And then AC or DC. I put in a five cubic foot AC chest freezer and I went that direction because from what I could find online, AC is better on your batteries going through an inverter than DC. I don't have any experience with DC, so I can't confirm that. But I will tell you, it is pretty hungry on the batteries. This is powered by a 2000 watt inverter and two deep cycle, six volt lead acid batteries. If you can go with the lithium ion batteries, it's far superior, but more than double the price. I'm really happy I went with AC in the end because I don't actually run this off my inverter or batteries hardly ever. I run it mostly off my generator since I'm using the generator so often for video editing. If I run the generator for one hour in the morning and two hours in the evening, it actually keeps this freezer frozen no problem. Here in Mexico, I have to monitor it a little bit more than that. But if ever I wanna leave for days at a time on a big adventure, I have a solar panel that I can put out I'm hoping to put a much larger solar panel system on the motorhome, it's just not in the budget quite yet. But then I plug the freezer into my inverter through an outlet timer that I have programmed to run 30 minutes on and then two hours off. 30 minutes on, two hours off, and that'll buy me many days on the batteries. It's probably not the perfect system, but it's been working great for me. I've had it going in here for about eight months, and now I have about 20 pounds of beautiful yellowtail meat that I can enjoy over the next several months. Unfortunately, this is gonna be a shorter than normal episode because the forecast isn't really looking so good in the next few days. So I'm just gonna upload this one here and move on to the next adventure fresh. But most of all, thanks for watching everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. I'll catch you on the next one.